Ferrite magnets and neodymium magnets are not only useful when it comes to securing important documents to your whiteboard, but are also a ton of fun to play around with. As you probably already know, such permanent magnets have two magnetic poles, one north and one south pole, which both create a magnetic field. And while the same magnetic polarities create a repulsive force, opposing magnetic polarities create an attraction force. This on the other hand would mean that if we positioned one magnet exactly above another magnet with the same polarities facing each other, we could suspend an object in midair. This phenomenon of suspension in midair happens when we counteract the weight force with an equal opposing force, in our case the repulsive force of the magnets. Now you can try this small experiment at home and will always come to the conclusion that such a suspension is only possible for a couple of milliseconds before the magnet falls down to earth. The problem of this setup is described in Earnshaw's theorem, which states that there is no equilibrium position in a static electric or magnetic field. So in this video we are going to try to work around this theorem and hopefully find out how we can achieve magnetic levitation. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where many engineers turn designs into real boards to make projects more professional. Order high quality PCBs for insanely low prices, currently even with free shipping. The solution to our problem is this metal cylinder with two wires coming out of it. By applying its nominal voltage of 12 volts to its wires, current flows through it, which apparently turned it into a magnet. But of course, not a permanent magnet. By removing its power source, the ferromagnetic screws are no longer attracted by it. Which means this is an electromagnet. Now if you do not have one of those laying around, you can easily build one by winding a lot of enamel copper wire around a ferromagnetic rod, like a screw, and powering the coil afterwards with a voltage source. But we are getting off topic here. The reason why an electromagnet is the solution to our initial problem is because its magnetic field is not static. We can turn it on slash off whenever we like. But simply replacing the lower permanent magnet is not the solution either, since the repulsion force would still not create a stable system. You can think of it as trying to balance an object on the palm of your hand without moving. It does not work. So instead we should position the electromagnet above the permanent magnet, whose attraction forces would now create a more or less natural stability. Next, we need a closed loop feedback system, which tells our electromagnet to turn on or off. Logically, the electromagnet would need to turn on when the permanent magnet falls below a certain threshold value and turn off when the permanent magnet gets too close to the electromagnet. A suitable sensor for this task would be this SS495A linear Hall effect sensor. By connecting it to 5 volts according to its datasheet pinout and measuring its output voltage with a multimeter, we can see that its output voltage decreases or increases from a start value of 2.5 volts depending on which polarity of the magnet gets close to it. So by positioning it underneath both of our magnets, we could tell the electromagnet to turn on when the voltage is below 2.5 volts and turn off when the voltage is above 2.5 volts. This way the permanent magnet would theoretically oscillate and thus be suspended in midair. In order to simplify the required circuit a bit though, I got myself a pre-made circuit for my Hall effect sensor. This one offers an analog and digital output and is based around an LM393 comparator IC. By using the continuity function of my multimeter and thus reverse engineering the circuits, I came up with this basic schematic. Now when the permanent magnet gets too close to the Hall effect sensor, its voltage value falls underneath 2.5 volts. 
since the non-inverting input of the comparator is connected to a voltage divider which creates 2.5 volts, this input has a higher voltage than the inverting input and thus the output gets pulled high to 5 volts through the pull-up resistor. This is basically the signal that we need to work with. But the circuit also includes a second comparator stage, which pretty much only inverts the signal in order to illuminate an LED, which we can later use as an indicator to fine adjust the threshold value. All that was left to add to the circuit was basically a MOSFET driver and a MOSFET, to turn on slash off the electromagnets according to the whole effect signal. So I gathered all the mandatory components and soldered them according to my finalized schematic to one another on a piece of perfboard. After 30 minutes of soldering, the circuit was complete, but what was still missing was an enclosure for the project. For that, I simply got myself an old piece of acrylic glass on which I marked two 10cm squares and cut them afterwards with a handsaw. Once that was done, I marked 1cm from the edges in each corner of one acrylic piece, a point, and used this piece as a template to create 4mm holes in the corners of the two acrylic pieces. The last 4mm hole I had to create was in the middle of the upper acrylic piece. Next, I got myself an M4 threaded rod and marked 4 pieces onto it with a length of 14cm. After creating them with the same handsaw as before, I added a nut to each end, slid them all through the holes of the lower acrylic piece and secured them to it with M4 spacers. To finish the enclosure, I secured the electromagnet in the middle of the other acrylic piece, added nuts to the upper section of the threaded rods and slid the upper acrylic piece onto it. This way I can easily adjust the height of the electromagnet which will come in handy later. At this point I hooked up the output wire of the whole effect circuit to the MOSFET driver while also creating a common ground, connected the electromagnet to the MOSFET terminals, secured the sensor circuit to the bottom piece with a bit of glue and powered each circuit with its suitable voltage source. And after fine adjusting the whole effect threshold value through the potentiometer, I started trying to levitate a magnet, which actually, to my surprise, did not work very well. As you can see, it seems like the threshold value for turning on slash off the electromagnets are too far apart, which results in this rather fun to look at oscillation. Even by creating my own more powerful electromagnets, I could not get rid of this problem, which in a nutshell means that my utilized comparator circuit is apparently not optimal for this kind of application. The sensor itself should not be the problem though, since I have seen others who place the same sensor type directly underneath the electromagnet and had no problems with their setup. So all in all, for now I can only offer this rather crude prototype of an upside down magnetic levitator. But we are not at the end of the journey here since the majority of commercial products place the electromagnet on the bottom and not the top. But that is a subject for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.